Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires. Today Grandpa Rick has used his teleport gun to bring us to Arabia to witness a match between Miguel playing as our Red Slavs and MBL playing as our Blue Magyar. Now as the players herd their herdables, explore their immediate surroundings, and try to go up to feudal as fast as possible, let's take a look at the respective Civ matchup we'll be watching today. The Slavs are an infantry siege civilization Weak archery line, decent cavalry. Now, I say decent instead of mediocre because they do get bloodlines and husbandry as well as all six upgrades. And from there, they basically become a grab bag civilization uh, with a number of very diverse bonuses and features. Their farmers work a tiny bit faster than usual. Their siege units cost 15% less and they get supplies for free. So their militia line from the beginning costs 15 less food automatically. Now, in terms of castle techs they have two i would say pretty cool technologies the first replaces 40 percent of the stone cost of a castle with wood and so a castle goes from being 650 stone to 400 stone and 250 wood now by the way this is also applicable to towers uh and before you get too excited you the one of the cute ironies of the game is that you actually first have to build a castle and pay the 650 stone in order to research this technology their second is Drujina, which makes their infantry have trample damage. Super cool upgrade. Now, one very cool feature of the Slavs is that their military buildings, and by that I mean barracks, stable, archery ranges, and siege workshop, act like houses. So they give you plus five population room, which is pretty useful in early game uh, when everyone builds a barracks, maybe an archery range, a stable, whatever it is you build, uh, you don't have to invest 25 wood to continue producing houses. Uh, some people think it allows for early game rushes. Uh, I'm not too sure about that because, you know, it, it is a cool feature, but a barracks costs 175 wood compared to the 25 of a house. So uh, whether or not this is an incredibly useful feature, I leave it up to the players to decide. Their unique unit, incredibly cool, incredibly tanky. The Boyar, a relatively fast cavalry unit, incredibly strong melee armor i think it starts at a base of an eight for the basic unit and they're you know decent attack at 12 for the basic unit so hopefully we get to see boyars uh you don't really see them all that much these days at least not in the games that i've seen and casted but uh you know a, a boy can always dream uh for an early christmas present we'll see what miguel does with this particular civilization opposing him is mbl as the magyars this is a civilization built for speed. Uh, their scout cavalry line costs 15% less from the beginning of the game. So whereas our red slav gets uh, supplies for free. And here we go. Let's take a look at the house. Immediately, if you took a look at the top right of your screen, the population went from 20 to 25 when he built that barrack. So a cool feature. Anyway, back to the Magyars. Uh, not to get <laughs> too sidetracked, their scout line does cost 15% less from the beginning of the game. One of the best military upgrades, I think, in the or features in the game, they get forging, iron casting, and blast furnace for free. So all the attack upgrades for their melee units are free. So not only does this save you... Oh, look at this cool... Uh, what is this, an albatross? Kind of coasting there on its wings. Not only does it save you the resources needed to upgrade these uh to research the upgrade but it's also the time so i always like to say that blast furnace is the hardest one right it's 100 in-game seconds takes a long ass time to research you get that automatically as the magyars now they can upgrade their cavalry archers so they have extra range and extra attack uh as i'm talking here miguel comes in with the standard militia opening uh we'll we'll finish up with the magyars and then take a quick look at the bases their unique unit not as powerful as the boy are by any stretch of the imagination. Uncharacteristic mistake here by Miguel uh, right at the beginning of the game to lose a scout cavalry. That is not good. And now these militia need to be careful. Not that they were very powerful before, but now they're even weaker uh, without their supporting scout cav to help pick off these villagers. As I was saying, the Magyar Hussar, not a very uh, tanky unit. Basically, uh, a normal Hussar, except it has... Uh, a, an attack bonus against siege instead of monks so on top of that they do cost 10 gold except you can research a an upgrade you have to pay to research an upgrade to get rid of the gold cost so 
you don't really see Magyar Hussars very much in, in uh, the current meta of the Magyars. Hopefully that, you know, changes. I love to see unique units. And that's essentially the Magyars. In an open map like this, because their foot archers have more line of sight, because their scout line is cheaper, and one cool thing about them is their villagers do kill wild animals, such as this lion, with one fell swoop of their swashbuckling pirate sword, it makes them very aggressive early on, or they can be very aggressive early on, because the amount of time that you need to kill the wild animals in this game is quite lengthy if you want to put on any kind of pressure. My god, do you have to, you know, tap your foot and check your clock as the one villager tries to kill a lion or a tiger or a, or a lizard or whatever it is. So these guys, the Magyars, kill it with one hit only. Now... Where are the players situated? MBL, fairly uh, decent, I would say, base here. He can easily wall this off. Uh, this is very easily walled off. His gold is in the back, which is fantastic for him. Completely open, though, in the north, which is why Miguel is uh, putting on the pressure here. Miguel, on the other hand, it's a little bit too late in the game <laughs> to analyze his position because he's already walled himself off. I decided not to complete the wall off here in the east. The south looks to be completed. And now he's in the north. So he's carving himself a little trapezoid of land on Arabia. MBL being annoying with his own scout, basically seeing everything. Let's see what he's seen of his of uh, Miguel's base. The entire northern portion, the entire southern portion. And now he's going to hopefully, for his sake, discover the eastern portion with this scout, which gets shoot away. I mean, take a look. It's a swat. It's a, like a pirate sword, right? Whenever a villager attacks, I'll try to zoom in, and you tell me if I'm just uh, just completely out of my tree here. Uh, but to me, it looks like a pirate sword. In any event, Miguel frantically trying to complete the wall off here while the spearmen zone out this one cavalry unit for MBL. And what has Miguel seen of MBL's building? All of it. I'm going to zoom out. He's seen the south. He's seen the east. He's seen the north and the west. So immediate immediate advantage here to Miguel. We'll see what he can do with it. Both players are in feudal. Both players are sitting on basically the same villager count, one going up to 29, one going up to 28. My favorite lemon bushes are uh, forage bushes in all the game with these pretty blue butterflies. Just going to stare at them for a second. And yeah, let's see what uh, the players have produced here. A barracks for Miguel. Our blue... Magyar player has a stable out already. Okay. Oh, decides to cancel his uh, the Great Wall that he was building here and relocates it in a more forward position. Miguel's resources, though, are a bit more exposed here. I mean, any kind of archer standing here. Actually, no, never mind. I take that back immediately. I was going to say depends where he puts down his mining camp, but he is putting it in the re rear portion of the gold patch. Sorry about that. I uh, was having a glitch with my microphone. And Miguel is out on the map again now. Instead of two militias and a scout, he's got three spearmen. He knows he's playing against Magyar. Wow, MBL very confident going up to, to Wheelbarrow on the back of only 30 villagers. This is a, a time-intensive and food-intensive upgrade. I think it's 175 food in addition to the wood, which I think is 50. Don't mind me, I'm just an Age of Empires caster who uh, is guessing at how much wood Wheelbarrow costs. I believe it's 175 and 50, but that's not the important thing. The time really is the killer here. How much idle time this TC has accumulated by virtue of this upgrade. That being said, they're both getting it, and they both got it at the same time. <laughs> so, I guess, uh, joke's on me. These spearmen still trying to poke away at this house. I'm not going to do too much. Okay, the destroys the corner of his palisade wall, puts a stable uh, blacksmith on there instead. Looks like an archery range. You can tell by the tower here being built. Okay, so MBL is 200 food away and a little bit of gold away from going up to castle. Our red slab, though, is basically in a little bit better position here, 100 food ahead. He's got his blacksmith. Where is his second structure? The stable. 
the both players not really committing to any kind of feudal aggression and i hope i know what that means that means big castle age big imperial age battles and that's what we live for in the age of empires community that and spearmen attacking lions i always feel bad for the animals in this game i mean they're just doing what they're doing you know they're just animals they're stupid they don't know any better uh <laughs> sorry if you watch my casts you know i go off on tangents uh okay two spearmen crossing each other in the dead of night here you would do well to turn around and help defend this house no okay both players now going up to castle we're getting forging for our slav player our magyar player as i said automatically gets the upgrade and so doesn't need to invest the resources or the time another stable going down for our magyar i mean it, it, it's a, a debate here about the slavs in my opinion as to whether or not they're a good cavalry civilization they do get bloodlines they do get uh husbandry and they do get all six blacksmith upgrades but they don't have paladin oh this he's got to be careful this is what i always talk about when you wall off a big chunk of the map i'm going to zoom out Look at this big chunk that he's carved up for himself. How the hell are you supposed to defend the edges of this, uh, you know? You take all this time, all the resources to build it, only to have one annoying <laughs> spearman who attacks on a four destroy and demolish the corner of it. Both players reaching castle at essentially identical timing here. Neither player really doing anything but building villagers. Okay, three knights for our Slavic player, one archer for our... Magyar <laughs> Lumberjack upgrades going down for Miguel. He's uh, pretty comfortable here Two town centers for him one next to I love this location one weak spot is of course if there's any siege or, or archers here But killing tubers with one stone the the wood line and the gold is amazing as is this location So perfect location here too. nice big zoning chunk uh, to help defend the base not to be outdone, MBL says, I'm going to put down my own town center. Not a big fan of this one, as it only does give him access to one resource. This one, too. So, MBL taking a little bit of a disadvantage, in my opinion, when it comes to the uh, secondary and tertiary town centers. That being said, we'll see if it even matters, uh, whether or not Miguel can get into his base. In the meantime, the Great Wall of Houses going down here in the western portion of his base... Yeah, these are not Feudal Age Spearmen. These are not Dark Age Scouts. These are Castle Age Knights, and they're going to demolish that palisade. However, not fast enough before MBL can get out two Cavalry Archers. He is going up to four of them. So, as I said, the Magyar Civilization, my god, are they built for speed. This would be uh, the Vin Diesel of civilizations here. They're protecting their family. As they ride out... But Miguel trying to do a reach around here from the back finds a weak spot. Okay, by virtue of this town center, actually, uh, MBL is quite well protected here. Right as I was uh, trash talking the location, he immediately immediately proves me wrong by having two villagers. But they've got to repair the palisade. No, decides to instead put up a secondary wall while the cavalry archers try to find something along the outskirts of his base, any kind of damage. And there's that house that went down. And okay, Miguel demolished the entire palisade wall that was here and replaced it with these houses. I would love to see some kind of uh, back wall behind these or in front of these. For now, though, both players just kind of circling each other's bases. Cavalry heading home. They realize I think they're probably not going to get much done. Maybe try to catch these uh, cavalry archers as they make their way home but no they are way too far apart look how the distance between them nine cavalry archers for our magyar player amazing i wonder if that means we're going to see the recurve bow upgrade which is the uh, as i mentioned the upgrade that gives them the plus one attack and plus one range once we get to that stage of the game yet no one has no one has castles yet so that upgrade is pretty far away monastery going down for our red slav yeah so our slavic player is sitting on 63 villagers to 53 of our magyar player so advantage to him oh no leaves the gate open but uh 
Oh, I, brilliant move here by MBL. I mean, how many of us, when we saw that big, juicy target open gate, would have just run inside and then been trapped just in time for eight nights to come and just demolish our cavalry archers? I mean, they're, they're, they're good for a purpose, but my god, are they horrible against knights, especially at this stage of the game. Any upgrades on our knights? We have a plus one, plus one against the plus two attack on our cavalry archers so fairly equal uh upgrades i would say no one really sitting at too much of an advantage but he's got to be careful he can't leave uh, individual packs or individual knights to roam free against 13 cavalry archers going up to 18 okay brilliant play here by mbl bringing in some monk support if you don't know if your opponent goes knights a natural counter to that is the monk most players get scared when they hear the uh, conversion sound, the spells being cast by the only spellcaster in the game. What do we have in here? Scorpions. Okay. So MBL taking, uh, Miguel rather, taking advantage of his civilizational bonus to make cheaper scorpions. And our blue Magyar for now is just upgrading his cavalry archers for some reason building one knight. A fourth town center going down. I'm loving these locations for Miguel. I mean, I might harp on some of these things sometimes, but really, Age of Empires is a game of increments. It's, uh, I mean, some of them. So, some games between players are just two players taking baseball bats and trying to bash each other's skull in, skulls in. But on the whole, this is a game where small advantages... Oh, we got a... Wow, MBL has recruited a lion to help him defend his base. Amazing. But this is a game of increments, so small little advantages, a couple of villagers early on lead, create massive ripple effects later on uh, Later on in the game. Think of it as the RTS butterfly effect. He's got to be careful here, though. If he chops these trees, they're only 25 away from opening his base. My god, this lion really wants a... Uh... Oh my god. He is really out for blood here. Too bad for him. He runs at a .7. And these knights run at a 1.49. That being said, they have stopped. And a lion. Oh, no. Oh, my God. The lion is still alive with 3 HP. Miguel decides to disengage completely. Now, as I am watching the flora and the fauna of the map, there is a massive engage at the front of Miguel's base. Gets a convert on the knight. And these scorpions, I mean, with the high ground, should shoo away these cavalry archers or die, but take a huge chunk of them with them but here come uh, Miguel's knights from the south this is why he didn't mind not attacking the lion not killing the lion because he needed these knights elsewhere okay both players disengaging for now MBL running back to his base with the majority of his army three knights though trying to come into the base to get immediately converted Okay, and didn't even get the, the knight. So fantastic pickup here for Miguel, who is plopping down his first castle very forward. And a defensive castle going down for our blue Magyar player. Now, he did not see this castle, right? Isn't it amazing how these pro players both are putting down castles at basically the exact same time? I mean, by virtue of this being a more defensive castle, MBL has villagers much closer at hand. But here come the Slavs with hammers in their hands. And they are going to build this castle on this hill. I love this location for Miguel. Flat ground everywhere around. This is a true king of the hill castle. MBL, similar situation. He's got this hill next here, next to him to the south. But this might be a problem for him uh, if there's a treb or anything up here. Okay. While I'm talking about hills, Miguel has gone up to seven light cav and he's got what four knights here one has the conversion symbol on it my god this lion is still alive now is he going to chase the red army now oh my god this is a uh equal opportunity lion doesn't matter what civilization you are whether you're the bloods or the crypts you're red or blue it will attack you if you get in its face <laughs> let's see what happens here any uh We'll see what upgrades the players are getting. Okay, Miguel is going up to Imperial. So we've had some skirmishes. We've had some battles. Now he's going to discover the castle. We've had a little, uh, you know, 
take a look at the bottom of your screen 34 kills for mbl 27 for miguel so not a lot of big skirmishes not a lot of big fights here abandons this castle for some reason i think he saw the uh cavalry archers coming but i hope this means that 34 minutes into the game now that we're approaching imperial for one of our players which by the way once he hits imperial that's going to spur mbl to go imperial too i hope I hope that means we're going to see some big, big battles. For now, yeah, MBL going up as well on the back of 100 Villager. Villager count basically identical for both players. One sitting at 100, one sitting at 103. So not a huge advantage. Of course, these are two highly trained, highly ranked players with lots of experience. So why would they ever get murder holes? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't know why pro players don't get it. I harp on it every time I see it. And now this lion... No, this might be a different lion. Okay, lions attacking everywhere. Interesting placement here by Miguel for these two castles. He's got the upper hill, the lower hill. Uh, this is the upper class bougie castle whose residents, you know, live with a nicer view of the surrounding desert. This is the hardworking castle that's building a treb. But our Magyar player is going up to almost 30 cavalry archers. And he, look, look at the resources he's banking. Is that a 1,000 food, almost a 1,000 gold? Uh, that must mean we're going to see heavy cavalry archers, right? Okay, cavalier upgrade being researched for Miguel. So these knights are going to become cavaliers and pack an even bigger punch. As I said in the beginning of the game, their cavalry is kind of eh, middle of the road. <laughs> Miguel hears me from the future and decides to go cavalry. And let's see who takes this engage here. Yeah, the blue has to disengage. I'm sure he could take down a huge number of knights here, but he does not want to lose any of these archers. He got thumb ring. He's getting leather archer armor. Now this castle is under attack. So Miguel, by virtue of reaching Imperial first, has pumped out, what is this, four trebuchets, three active, one in production. This castle is definitely going to go down to four trebs. It has to, right? This is not a lot of villagers repairing it, only nine. But I don't think MBL is going to want to keep... Oh, 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 recurve bow at the top left of your screen. Bracer, chemistry. We are going to see heavy cavalry archers when he has the resources. I'm 100% sure of it. Well, not 100%, let's say 99.99% sure of it. What I'm not so sure of is whether this castle is going to go down. This spearman from the beginning of the game just got himself another kill. Two kills. My god, what a sleeper unit this one Spearman is. But now these Cavalry Archers have to be careful. Chemistry being added too. Okay, I said we don't see them very often, but here come some Magyar Hussars. They, god, they're pretty. Not as nice as the Winged Hussars, but still incredibly pretty. He is at 44 Cavalry Archers. But here comes Miguel with a massive, let's zoom out and see the battlefield here, a massive uh, cavalry force. Yeah, the castle did end up going down to the north, so now uh, Miguel feels a bit more comfortable, able to engage, since he's pretty much going to gun down this castle as well with no fewer than five trebuchets. And there go the last or second last Magyar Hussars. He's got only two left. Oh my god, is this Spearman still alive with four kills? Amazing. I love this game so much. Such nonsense. And we're getting Parthian tactics. We're getting heavy cavalry archers. Okay, so MBL knows. Oh god, one of them took a treb shot to the face. MBL knows that the Magyars are built for speed. He knows that they're built for running around, sniping, attacking, dealing damage as fast as possible. He is going up to 43 Cavalry archers, heavy cavalry archers. That being said, these Slavic cavaliers are no slouches. They are demolishing these heavy cavalry archers, but numbers go to MBL, so he'll be able to push this uh, force back. That being said, six cavaliers in production. A very aggressive forward castle here by Miguel. Did uh, did he research detonets, or however you pronounce it, de detonets, while I wasn't looking? To make these castles uh, much, much cheaper. Remember they were that upgrade, I don't think I mentioned the name, but it does replace 40% of the castle cost with wood. 
So 650 stone becomes 400 stone, 250 wood, approximately. And what is he building here? More archery ranges. Yes, let's see more and more of these. I love cavalry archers, and I love heavy cavalry archers even more. That being said, will Miguel even give him a chance to use his... Oh my god, 54 cavalry archers, guys. 54 cavalry archers. Whatever Miguel puts in uh, in front of these cavalry archers is going to die. Unfortunately, they are down about 30% of their HP. Okay, so he rebuilt these archery ranges to the south. This is something that if you watch a lot of my games, I harp on at the end when I do my post-game analysis, how some players at the end of the game just don't have production structures, but MBL, by virtue of the fact that he's MBL, knows that he's gonna lose this position. He lost his two castles. He had to retreat from the engage. And he knows that these archery rangers are goners. So instead of just relying on one archery range, which he had, he instead <laughs> builds six more. So fantastic gameplay here. He's got 46 villagers on wood, enough wood for days. And this is bad for Miguel here. You can't stream these guys in one at a time. But MBL runs face first into a castle and the HP keeps going down and down and down for these heavy cavalry. He's got to be careful. I mean, numbers wise, he's got them. He's definitely outnumbering and can, you know, one shot these cavaliers. But eventually you tickle away at their HP enough that your quantity doesn't matter. At that point, it becomes a game of quality. I love the use of the high ground here, dealing even more damage. They attack on a 12 instead of the usual 11. They have eight range instead of the usual seven. This is the power of the recurve bow upgrade for the Magyars. A castle going down. He must have researched detonets. There's no way he uh, he didn't. There's no way he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven castles for our red Slavic player without researching that upgrade. I mean, I could be wrong. I'd be shocked if I'm wrong, as every man out there would say and as every wife would lament. I would be shocked if I was wrong. <laughs> but here we go. Gets a, This is going to demolish. Oh, he should have left them. Should he have left them sieged or should he have unsieged them and... Uh, Sorry, should he have left them siege and tried to repair them and brought this uh, mangonel forward? Oh, God. Yeah, that mangonel is 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 not going to do anything to this Imperial Age army. But here we go. If he had, if he just had murder holes, two or three of these would be dead right now. That being said, let's uh, stop ranting and raving about murder holes. Cavaliers running through, but not really doing too much. Getting a few villagers shooing away some uh, cavalry archers cavalry archers trying to do a little sneaky run by in the back here but hussars from our blue slab catch them and look how quickly they'll demolish this house okay he doesn't know what we know that there are two castles right here oh no this is a this is a huge mistake here by mbl turn around turn around go home oh no turn around go home <laughs> please go home Oh, look at this trail of dead bodies. He's going to do so much damage, but he's going to lose so much of this attacking force here. Hussars still tickling away. And now he's uh, Miguel is going to have to rush to defend this. He's got the supply room, desperately tries to build a Viper gate here, but doesn't have enough time because of how just how fast these units are. 1.54 runs face first into another castle. Nine castles for our red Slavic player. My God. So yeah, this is now what they're relegated to is uh, tickling away HP of buildings because I don't think he expected a castle on every freaking hill of this map. MBL, who is now getting plate barding armor? For what? He's got one cavalier and two light calves. Interesting. Okay. These hussars are fully upgraded. Attack on an 11, defend on a 3, defend on a 6 against these uh, cavalry archers. And yeah, I mean, like I said, they had 30 kills before. So these got 13 kills, 16, 17. It seems like a lot, but it's kind of underwhelming when you consider the fact that there's 37 cavalry archers there. And now he's got to deal with this. Oh, I'm starting to get worried here for MBL. This was a huge mistake bringing these uh, cavalry archers inside the base. You know my opinion if you've watched my casts. Don't go in. Oh my god, he got blocked. Oh my god. 
Fantastic play here by Miguel. Completely screws MBL's cavalry force while himself just raiding the shit out of his farm line. Okay, probably could do better uh, better use for those Hussars. Oh my god, and he walled him again! No, but not quick enough to get this one. So this force of 37 has now become 26. Yeah, MBL. As I was saying, if you've watched my casts, you know my opinion. If you can get into your opponent's base, always, always make sure you have an exit strategy. Always make sure that it's available because the last thing you want is to get trapped inside your opponent's base. The biggest chunk of MBL's army has just been rendered useless, has been nullified, has been countered by God. Look at the mini map on your screen. I'm going to zoom out when the game is over, but how many castles? <laughs> 10 castles for our red slab. He says, I may not be the Franks. I may not build a castle for 25% cheaper, but guess what I have? I have detonates. More stables going down here. I don't know what MBL is planning on doing with these uh, cavalry archers. They've got to run back home. That being said, there's a bunch here that are defending military advantage very much still in favor of MBL. 51 to 35. That being said, he is being picked apart. His villager count is down to 71. He is at half the villagers of a red Slavic player. Finally, the cavalry archers... Oh, I was going to say go home, but no, they stop halfway through. Look at their HP at the bottom of your screen. 700 out of 1,500. Put them in a castle right away. You have one monk in production. You're going to need a lot more than that. Not the best use of these hussars to attack a gate that literally is doing jack shit. Oh, another bad placement for a town center. I get why he needs it, but what a bad placement here. Completely exposed. I mean, what is this? Does Miguel also have a god's eye view? He's sending these uh, body. This is not a small body of cavalry here. 21 horsey, horsey units. And they are, are they going? Yeah, they see the down center. He's attacking here. He's attacking here. And now take a look at the mini map. Blue has been trapped into a corner, a sliver of land on this map. And Hussars. He's got 82 villagers on food. Does our red Slavic player farms for days. 92 farms here. And our Magyar player, I think, has the faster army, but... Actually, no, the Hussars, sorry, are much quicker. No, I was not much quicker, but they... Yeah, on average, I would say the uh, Magyar army is faster just because these Cavaliers are slow. But, ugh, ugh, ugh. Yeah, MBL's gonna have to call the United Nations. This is just a war crime right now. Civilian population being decimated. And he's trying to rebuild stables at the front. I guess the front east portion of his base. These cavalry archers, don't get me wrong, they pack a punch. And that extra one tile range, believe me, it stacks. It makes it very hard to deal with. But my god, Miguel is just not giving him any breathing room. He's down to 54 villagers, MBL. 50 villagers. Oh, no, building a few more. He's literally at a th almost a third of the villager count. You know why? Because he is building... What is he building? 37 villagers in production. I, 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 he thinks he has time to build 37 villagers? Oh, no. I mean, this is a great catch here. Still has these 44 cavalry archers, but he's finally doing what he should have done in the beginning. Oh no, right as I say that, I was going to say he's doing what he should have done, which is clump up these cavalry archers against the aggression and just patrolled from left to right, left to right, and just kept killing anything that tried to get into his base. Maybe try to wall off. I mean, how hard is it to build a house here or to put some stone? You've got 34 stone, enough for a wall. But right as I say that, that he's putting them in a the big clump, he carves them up again. And now, I mean, you, you might say that's the smarter move. He can defend more uh, spots at once. Yes, that's true. But defending it takes much longer when you have 20 cavalry archers instead of 44. So, yes, he can defend, but he's going to lose a lot more cavalry archers. At this stage of the game with sub-50 villagers, MBL really has to conglomerate his army. He's got He needs a death ball, basically. 
uh, in order to do any real damage here. Holy shnikes, look at this. <laughs> An 11th or 12th castle going down here for our red slab. He is... I don't know where he's getting all the stone from. I am not paying attention to the economics because there's horses firing arrows at other horses in this field of battle. And yeah, wow. Just wow, what a game. I'm going to zoom out. Let's take a look at the mini map. <laughs> oh my God. Castles, castles for days. Castles everywhere on this map. My God. What the hell was the point of this castle? Okay, Miguel was just peacocking at this point. He's showboating. Uh, and he tr has transitioned to a full trash army. I mean, two Cavaliers uh, aside. He's got 77 on food. Look at his resources. 77 on food. I think 35 on wood might be overkill. Uh, transfer them on food. Build more. Okay, he's going Siege Workshop. Interesting. I, I would say just build, you know, 20. Let's see how many stables he has. Apologies to anyone on a smaller... Uh, phone or screen he's got 12 stables i mean at this stage of the game maybe get that up to 15 16 to 20 maybe and just swarm swarm you do not need villagers on gold you do not need this many villagers on wood your farms are producing a lot of food right now they do not need to be seeded as frequently uh imagine he had killed 30 uh villager population and replace it with 30 more uh hussars not that he needed to, he still won the game. <laughs> and all of this is all conjecture. Let's take a look at the stats. 157 cavalry archers, 184 hussars. Peak APM incredibly similar for both players at about 135, uh, rather 136 for Miguel, 133 for our blue Magyar MBL. But look at the kill count. Also fairly similar. Miguel, 360, 326 for our blue Magyar MBL. Wow. Uh, but look, at, <laughs> as I say that, towards the end of the game, so it seems like uh, actually MBL was ahead in the kill count, which is not surprising. You've got ranged units, and you've got a shit ton of ranged units. 49 heavy cavalry archers from the Magyars. My God. Again, that plus one attack and the plus one range really do add up, especially when you've got 50 units but I think by virtue of the fact that these are ranged units, he obviously has more kills, right? You can attack, run away, attack, run away. Miguel, 194. Take a look at the bottom of your screen. 194 villagers <laughs> killed in all of these Hussar raids towards the end of the game. I, well, not all of them towards the end of the game. The vast majority towards the end of the game. And my God, are these sands blood-soaked with Slavic and Magyar horses holy shit what a game my only regret is that i don't know what happened to that one lion with three hp okay this is the remnants of the uh attempted viper wall but take a look at the mini map at the bottom of your screen and take a look at this just magino line of castles that miguel was building i mean static defense has its weaknesses but yeah yeah i mean 33 villagers for mbl I don't know. I, I think he made a massive, massive mistake entering the base. I mean, how many kills? Five kills for this castle. Ten kills for this castle. Two kills for this one. None for him. Slouchy, lazy castle. Three kills for this one. Town center, none. Town center, even the town center has three kills. Oh my god, so I think when he sent those, th what was it, 37 decently healthy cavalry archers into here, and sure, he got something like 30 kills, but at the expense of your most powerful unit, I mean, you're killing villagers. Villagers are, are cheap. Villagers are the cheapest unit you have in, in, at this stage of the game, so you're killing cheap units with super expensive units, and on top of that, my god, what a fantastic... <laughs> Two, uh, twice, Miguel boarded up shop and just stopped MBL from escaping. And MBL just fell into the trap of entering your opponent's base without 100% knowing that you have an exit strategy. And my God, he did not expect this many castles. I wonder if Miguel knows that the player and the sieve who he's facing off against would have decimated him had he not built these castles. 
I really wish he watches this video. I really hope that he comments below. If anyone knows him, if anyone watches him play, if anyone knows somebody he knows who knows a friend of a brother of a cousin, please have him tell us what the hell was the logic behind building all of these castles. Is he, like I said, showboating? Is he peacocking? Or are these actually, you know, he knows MBL is a raider. He knows MBL, especially with Magyars, is going to raid the shit out of him. So he just makes choke uh, choke points. Is there anywhere on this map that's not covered by a red circle? I mean, look at these narrow isthmus of land here. I mean, how do you even get out of here? This wood line is blocking the exit. So if you have units here, they're, they're up shit's creek. One, two, three, four castle zones firing on you. Oh, my God. Um, nothing more really to say. I, I, I think uh, MBL here made the right move going with cavalry archers. And these, like I said, the, the recurve bow upgrade is insanely powerful, especially when you've got 50 of these fully upgraded units sitting at a plus five attack, plus five defense, plus six pierce armor. And... Wow. Wow. What a, what a fantastic, fast game. Uh, I thought that our Slavic player, if you had asked me before this match, will our Slavic player go cavalry? I would have probably said no. You know, I, I would have said maybe some static defense, some w good walling using the um, I'm trying to remember the the Drujina. Or is it Drujina? I don't know in uh, where the emphasis is, if it's on the second or, or last syllable, but. He could have used that for splash damage to render these uh, super heavy units, you know, try to close in ranks with with their, you know, his infantry, maybe elite skirmishers. I never would have expected him to have gone full balls to the wall hussars and just raid the hell out of MBL. MBL was unfortunately completely open here. I mean, he's a good idea to wall some of this off. Yeah, but you got giant chunks. I love, though. This is... MBL did... I, I think the... <laughs> let's put it like this. I think MBL made the best move of the game, and MBL made the worst move of the game. The worst, obviously, I've said it multiple times, going into this base, taking two castle arrow fire to the face and not retreating. That was the big mistake. But the best move of the game, which I think all of us are, are, are wise to learn from, is if you know you're going to lose a part of the map that has your production facilities, don't even hesitate. Immediately rebuild them somewhere else. Now, should you rebuild them this far away from the action? I mean, actually, it's not that far away if you're because he's producing cavalry archers, not a long uh, running distance, and he didn't really have much room anywhere else. But lesson learned, if you think you're going to lose your production, don't even wait. Wood is a, you know, in this game, it's as close to an infinite resource as you can get. Uh, compared, definitely compared to gold and stone and food. So rebuild, rebuild, and you know that way, if you lose the the center, you can rebuild your army immediately faster. If not, then how many games have I casted where at the end of the day the player runs out of resources or just has you know one archery range or one stable and there's an army bearing on his head or her head and he, they just can't reply in time. They just don't have the the time or the production facilities. I mean, look at Miguel, though, continually building uh, infrastructure everywhere. This is really a, le a good lessons here on this game, uh, from this game, rather, for all of us who are looking to improve our own game by watching these kinds of uh, incredible players. I mean, look at these ELOs, 2630 to 2488. If you can't take lessons from these players, you, you know, you can't take lessons from anyone. So... Overall, what a fast, hard-hitting game. Uh, in, at the end of the day, MBL bows out, and Miguel gets the W, and wow, GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips, and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.